Okay, so USB power soldering iron. Now I know there's a lot of videos out there that have done reviews on these and most of them are very good. I'm very pleased with mine. Uh, the only thing that I'd like to do that should be a little bit different is this is a touch control. You touch it and it goes on. It stays on about 10-15 seconds and if you don't keep tapping it which distracts what you're doing um, it goes off. So it says here fully functioning USB powered soldering iron. Rapid heat up which it is and instant recovery which it does. Tip can be easily replaced uh, yes it can. I bought me a couple extras because I do like this. Uh, heating element and soldering tip. I don't know what the difference is there but I guess if you put it in your coffee <coughs> you can heat it up, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, point is I got an extra one of these which I'm glad I did. What I want to do here is I want to take this apart and I want to bypass this touch control that I have to keep tapping on. It comes with a little handy plug. Plugs in the back and a good beefy power supply. Uh, as I've seen on YouTube a lot of people have mentioned that uh, you really want to stay away from the ones that plug into the wall. These really work the best. Uh, reason being of some type of uh, electrostatic uh, effect to the circuit you might be soldering. And I've got a piece of solder here. And as soon as it warms up, well, that is pretty darn quick. And it's a pretty heavy piece of solder. And it went off this is what I'd like to try to avoid. The only problem is, a little warning, I'm not sure yet, but leaving it on, it could possibly overheat. Well, I'm going to take the chance, and I'm going to disengage this touch control. I'm going to bypass it, and keep it on. And when I'm done, and there it goes. Even, it's motion sensitive too. When I'm done soldering, I will remember to unplug it period. And no Phillips screwdriver is created alike. No two. And this was, I mean, I wrecked my hand trying to get these screws out, which I'm going to try and find a re replacement for them. But point being is, they're kind of tough to get out. You want to really try and not strip them. So I've already loosened them a little bit. Oh, spring action. Come on out. Two, three. Uh, remove the collar first. Comes off. It's still a little warm. Give that a good pull. That's your that's your soldering tip. And this is one part of the connector. And when the collar comes down over it. It touches this lip and makes another contact. And these just kind of pop off. So let's see what we can do here. What kind of insanity am I going to have trying to get it back together? Okay. Well, that seems fair enough.
There it is, and I do believe this is the touch control. It goes to that. We're going to find a way to bypass that and have it in a constant state of on. Okay. Let's see. Uh huh. It's on a post. Okay, now this is uh, the touch sensor wire spring. When you touch this, it senses your touch, and on this 555 timer, creates a circuit. Now, to bypass that, this pin number one and pin number two, pin number one is the trigger, and pin number two pretty much makes a complete circuit. So, to solder these two points together. Pin 1, which is the trigger, and pin 2. We'll keep this on all the time. So that's what I'm going to do. Since, since that's such a... Uh, since this is such a delicate solder point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my other one. And I'll use the uh, my first soldering tip because I don't want to break this one in yet. There we go. That fits quite snug. A little bit of solder. Now I need to secure this. So let me grab a piece of painter's tape. There we go. Or I could have used a little bit of teacher tech. But since I'm using the teacher uh, painter tape, I guess it really doesn't matter. Tiniest dollop of flux across the two points. Let's see if I can't just drop a piece of solder on that and make that connection. Gotta have a beefy power supply, like I said. Now, let's see what kind of trouble I can get into here. I think that did it. Very good. This one seems to stay on better. That's why I don't want to mess with it. This one, definitely bypass. And it cools down quite quickly, so...
Not quick enough. Ouch. Straighten that out after it cools. It's pretty good. your springs back on that pin just to get it up and out of the way. Oh, okay. It pops up because of the spring. That's why we put the collar on. And then the back pops up. Alright. And let's put in one that I didn't strip. That looks alright. That looks pooped. Yeah, that looks like shit. And like I said, no two Phillips are created alike. Just use that. There we go. Yeah. See how long it stays on. Still on. Oh boy, free solder. We. No. And it's still on. That's hot. That's how you keep it running. And that's how you turn it off. Okay. I didn't want to neglect to show the close up here. And this is an 8 pin chip. I uh, 555 timer and it's on both sides there are four pins and in order there are one two three four five six seven and eight uh, pin one and two were the two pins that I soldered together and I think you can see a little solder joint leave everything else intact everything else is fine just cross these two pins with a drop of solder and make the contact between those two pins uh, as I said with a drop of solder and that will solve 
the issue of it going off.